let's look at our first example on how to simplify square roots that you don't have a perfect square to. So for example, what if you have this here? What if we have the square root of 40? Well, what you want to do is you want to figure out what is the largest number that goes in, into 40 that I can take the square root of and not get a decimal that goes on forever. So think of a perfect square number that goes into 40 here. So what you're going to do is you're going to just look at two numbers, but we want to look at the biggest number that goes into 40 I can take the square root of. So I'm thinking of 4 and 10. The reason why I'm thinking of 4 is because I can take the square root of 4. Now what you're going to do is you're only going to look at two numbers here. 4 times 10, notice that's 40. And 4 is the biggest number that I can take a perfect square out of. So what is the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So you're going to take that square root of 4 and you're going to write it on the outside of the square root sign. We call that the little radical sign. And then you're going to put the number 10 underneath the radical. So let's see if we can figure out if this original problem is the same as our simplified problem. I'm going to take your calculator here. What we're going to do is we are going to type in, let's type in the square root of 40. So second square root of 40. You're going to get this decimal that goes on forever. It doesn't repeat. It just keeps going on forever. We'll call that an irrational square root. And so now let's type in 2 times the square root of 10 and let's see if we get the same answer. If we do, we're right. So let's try another one here. Let's try this one here. Let's try, let's do the square root of 200. So I want to think of two numbers that go into the square root of 200 where one of the numbers is the largest number I can take the perfect square root of. Well, I'm going to use 100 times 2 because I can take the square root of 100, the square root of 100. And so remember from our previous example, you do the square root of 100, which is 10. That number is going to go on the outside of the radical and then you just rewrite what you have left. And then you would use your calculator here to determine if we have equivalent parts here. So let's see, second square root of 200, and then 10 times the square root of two. You will see we get equivalent parts. Let's try another one here. What if we have a number on the outside of the radical already? So for example, in this problem, four times the square root of 20. Okay, we're going to answer this one just like we would the previous ones. We're going to ignore the number on the outside first, and we're just going to look at the number on the inside. So let's just look at the square root of 20. How can I rewrite the square root of 20 thinking in terms of what two numbers go into 20 and then thinking about what is the largest number that I can take the square root of? Let's go here. Let's try 4 times 5. I can take the square root of 4, but I can't take the square root of 5. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this number that we originally had in the front, this 4, don't forget that it's actually here and it's also here. But what's going to take place is when you take the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is actually 2. But you have to do something with that 2. You have to take that 2 and multiply it to the number that's outside of the radical. So you're going to do 4 times 2. It's going to give you 8. And then you're going to rewrite the number that you cannot take the perfect square of on the inside of the radical. Let's see if we have equivalent parts here. Let's see if 4 times the square root of 20 is the same as 8 times the square root of 5. And it is. All right, let's try one more here. All right, let's do, let's try negative 2 times the square root of 48. Right here, think of two numbers that go into 48, but what's the biggest number that goes into 48 that I can take the square root of? Well, you might have to do some thinking on this one, but I'll go ahead and help you out. It's going to be 16 and 3, because I can take the square root of 16. 16 times 3 is 48. So here we go. Remember our rule from our previous problem. Once you take the square root of 16 here, you get 4. But we said that you have to multiply the number to the out or the multiply the number that's on the outside to the square root number that we get. But don't get confused here. There's a negative. Negative two times four, that's gonna give me negative eight on the outside. And then you're gonna take the number that you cannot take the perfect square of. You're gonna 
write it in the radical. And let's see if we have equivalent parts here. Let's see if negative two times the square root of 48, let's see if that is the same as negative eight times the square root of three. And it is. 